stories of what they think you're like but I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night and you tell me you are pleasing I'm never alone you're Good, good father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you, it's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am, oh, and I've seen many searching for Far and wide, but I know we're all searching for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word. You're a good, good father, it's who you are. It's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Cause you're perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all. As you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still into love 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 your good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are 
It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. who he is and who we are in him. I always said when we recognize who we are and if he's perfect and we're in him, what does that make us, right? Perfect through the blood of Jesus Christ. We're going to sing a couple of um, songs this afternoon. I'm not sure if we've sung before. We're going to pull down the screen. Let's um, start with uh, Here I Am to Worship. Try to send these out to the ones on the mailing list, and if you're not receiving some of these songs, just get with me, give me your email, and we try to send these out so we can learn some of these uh, beautiful worship songs. <clears throat> Here I am to worship, 
the Lord a clap of praise. Hallelujah. He's so worthy. Amen. Let's sing that uh, chorus, You Are My All in All, that song. They could pull it up in the back, You Are My All in All. Is he your all? Hallelujah. We're always saying that all that God was, he poured into Christ. And all Christ was, he poured into his bride. All he is. Amen. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as I precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. my shame raising again I bless your name you are my all in all when I fall down you pick me up when I am dry you fill my cup you are my all in all do you want your cup filled this afternoon oh Jesus that I seek you are my all in all seeking you as a precious jewel Lord to give up I'd be a fool you are my all in all and singing my shame rising again I bless your name you are my all in all and when I fall down you pick me up and I am dry you fill my cup 
You are my all in all. Let's all rise to our feet. Oh, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Let's just worship him once more. praise again. Deserves all of our praises. A th- thousand tongues cannot praise him enough. Let's change the order of the service over to call Brother Wade out this afternoon. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. Thank you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. I want to see you. Amen. That was your commitment today that you want to understand him. You just said that. You said, I want to see him. Well, you'll see him in the Word today if that's what you wanted. I know that's yours because you love him things. If anybody ever wants to get Brother Joe something, get him a zebra pen. He must eat them. I don't, he's, and they're hard stainless steel. I don't know what he gets out of it, but he loves those things. But uh, good to be in the house of the Lord. Good to be back. Good to see you smiling faces. We heard some good word while we were gone. And we're going to... Continue to do what we do and try to help you uh, help you learn about the Lord a little bit more. I was thinking, you know, they, it's the five-fold ministry, and the five-fold ministry, they got different angles to come the same way. So we, uh, we believe that you're not going to get it without it. So to me, that's pretty cut and dry. Right. <laughs> you're not going to get perfected without a five-fold ministry. So if you believe in anything else, you're not going to get it. That's, right. that's just the way it is. I turned the fan on this morning. I think it is still a little warm, though. But, uh, yeah, okay. If you got your Bibles, let's turn to the book of Revelations and just get started. We are still on the fourth seal. Uh, This will be part three. I will restore in four stages because we're on the fourth seal. I told you there was some fours that we need to look at. So the fourth seal, it even talks about the fourth part of the earth falling for Satan's life. So we're going to kind of look at the four stages today. In, uh, in the Bible and also in the prophet's message. So if you would, let's bow our heads and we'll get started. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for this day, Lord. We come 
under complete anticipation that you'll speak to us. That you'll move us out of the way. And as we were talking in the Bible school downstairs, Lord, this morning, just let us be a conduit. Lord, let nothing stop in our human brain. Lord, may it all go straight to our heart where we can hear from you, Father. You be the one that does the speaking, Father. You be the one that does the revealing because there's no way that human mortal man can reveal or even understand your word. It takes a complete revelation from you, Lord. We ask you to be with us now, Lord, and take care of us during the furtherment of this service. Bless the ones that are not here. Bless the ones that are on the highways traveling the ones that are away from us, Lord, the ones that are sick. We ask you to heal them now, Father, as the word goes forth. You said you sent your word and healed the people, and you delivered them from destruction. So, Father, we believe that. It's not just something we quote. We believe that as this word goes forth, there's healing power. There's salvation to this word, Lord. There's healing. There's deliverance. All the many things that we, well, honestly, we wouldn't be here, Lord, if we didn't think it would help us. Amen. So we, we believe that you're here to help us. We believe the word that's going to help us. And we believe that, as the brother said the other day, we are going to either leave here better or worse. So let us all leave here better today, Lord, knowing that you've spoke to us this afternoon, Father. Bless us now. Take care of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Revelation 6, verse 1. And when he had opened the fourth seal... I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And now looked, and behold, a pale horse, and his name that sat on him was Death. And hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. That's four things, if you'll notice that. Sword, hunger, death, and with the beasts of the earth. So we're going to kind of deal with fours today because I will restore. We'll be in four stages. Amen. Joel 2.24 tells us this. Now, here's the, here's, the, the, here's the setup to me for the end time. Because you and I are truly the children of Zion. Right. Now, we know this is talking to Israel, but we get it first. Right. If God doesn't restore a work in us, he's not going to go to Israel. Amen? All right, so he is going to. Be glad then, you children of Zion. Who's glad today? Amen. Who's glad Amen. Who's rejoicing today? Right. Well, then let's put the scripture together. And rejoice in the Lord your God, for he hath given you. Right. Right. Not the neighbor. He's given it to you. He has given you the former rain moderately. Right. Not just in dribbles. Right. Moderately. Because right. you know you can have a... You say, well, oh, Lord, rain a, st a storm on... No, you don't want that. You can't handle it. He knows what you can handle. Right. You can actually drown a plant by putting too much water on it. He knows what you want and what you need, and he puts it together for you. So he's going to give you the former rain moderately, which is what? The teaching rain. That's why it took 60 years since the prophets left to, for us to break the word down so that we can all understand it. Amen? Because you didn't understand it in 1965 if you were even alive. Neither did I. And we're just beginning now to learn what the prophet came to do. Amen. And he came to give the word to you and I to get us out of here. And he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former and the latter rain in the first month. All right, so it's going to be a quick work. The former rain is what? Teaching rain. Latter rain is the harvest rain. So we're now in the harvest time. Amen. And what happens about October? We'll get into this in a second. What happens in about October? The life starts coming out of the plant, goes into the root. Amen? So that you can harvest, because if you harvested it with the life in the tree or plant, you kill it. Amen? But when the life goes down, you can harvest it. But we'll get to that because remember, I will restore though. I will restore to you, verse 25, well, no, verse 24. And the floor shall be full of wheat, wheat, staff of life, something you can eat. And the fat shall overflow, not just dribble, not just sprinkle, but overflow with what? Wine and oil. We know what the wine and oil is, right? The wine is the stimulation of revelation, and the oil is the Holy Ghost. Right. All right, so he's going to pour out the Holy Ghost moderately in the end time. Feed us with wheat, 
And I will restore to you the years, years, 2,000 years. I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the pommel worm, my great army which I sent among you. Amen. And you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. You may be seated in the Lord and his blessing to the reading of the word. We're not going to need it. We're not going to need the chart today. We're just going to kind of, we're going to uh, review because it's been a few weeks, but we know we're on the fourth seal. <clears throat> and the fourth seal has a great meaning to me because it should have a great meaning to you because the rapture takes place on that fourth seal. All right. All right. Is that all right? Say amen. amen. All right. We're going to try to all stay awake today. Amen. 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 Okay. All right. So let's read what Brother Brown says on the fifth seal. We read it a couple weeks ago, but I want you to see this. What a prophet told us what was going to happen. I'm going to set this box up here to represent that. If God sends a certain spirit among them, that's the only thing that they can work by. Okay, so Martin Luther had a box. The just shall live by faith. That was his message, not sanctification. Not the other message. It, he had a message, and the people lived by that message. That's right. If God sends a certain spirit among them, that's the only thing they can work by is the spirit that works among them. Amen. Now, we'll prove to you by the history of the church and by the opening of the seals. So it must be by the opening of the seals we see what each box is, right. what each power that was given to the church, and how that Satan eat the power down. Because okay. remember... If you restore, that means it was up here, it come to here, and then you had to restore it back. Redemption is not replacement. Redemption is we were lost. Now we're going back. Amen? <clears throat> I will restore. That's what he's doing right now. Every time you come into church service, every time you read the Bible, every time you pray, he's restoring it back to the condition that it was supposed to be in. And we will prove to you by the history of the church and by the opening of the seals and the powers that let loose and watch exactly the church respond to the anointing and they couldn't do nothing else. Amen. All right, so you and I are under what? We're under the eagle anointing. Let's read, the, let's read number two. I'll just kind of uh, review a little bit for you. We're in the fourth seal, but it's the seventh church age. Now, we've we got our chart. I gave you all a chart you should all know that we are in the last church age. Amen. And then notice the four beasts that was sent forth, the com fourth beast that was sent forth to combat the Antichrist in this last beast. Are you ready? The last beast that was sent forth or the last power to combat the Antichrist who was against the teaching of God, the Antichrist, was an eagle. See, the fourth living beast was an eagle. Now, you just study the ages, study the scripture. It's an eagle. And then the Bible, the last age was an eagle age. And God likens the eagles to his prophets. Now, watch. The last days, the eagle age, a revealer of the true word. Now, remember, it wasn't that they had false word right. in so much it was all false. No, there was a little bit of truth. They had their box. Right, right. Martin Luther had his box. God said, all right, if you start with the just shall live by faith, I'm going to anoint that, save a group of people, but that group of people is going to have to live under that right. the whole age. Then you got your lap overs because then you come to sanctification. They quit going to pubs and drinking beer. And, and you know, even Martin Luther said he wanted to get rid of the Jews. Said they were worthless people. When that was, you know what? That wasn't God. That was Martin Luther. Amen. Amen. That, was, that was Martin Luther's idea. That wasn't God's idea. Right. Amen. But the just shall live by faith. That was God. Amen. That was the quickening that God brought to Martin Luther. Right. God knew Martin Luther was the only one that could handle that or he would have given it to somebody else. Right. Same way with Brother Branham and the Eagle Age. There was no one built to take that except William, Mary, and Branham. Amen. The only one to take that pressure. Right. Right. But you know what? In him taking the pressure, he opened the sky so that you and I could take the pressure. Glory. He opened up the revelation so that you and I, we don't have to, we don't have to look to, he wasn't talking about Mama Eagle being him. No. Right. Mama Eagle was God. Mama Eagle was Christ, still is Christ, and that's who he pointed us to. A true prophet will always point you to Christ, never to himself. 
But now what do we do as man? We point to William Branham. No, you can't do that. You'll lose every time. Amen? Revelation 3.14, let's look at what our, what our age gives us. And to the angel of the church of the layout of sins, write these things, saith the amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. Look at those fours, the amen. The faithful, the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thou works that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, he didn't say that, thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that they may see. That, now that's our anointing. So God has sent that to take care of all the things that he said before, that we were blind or miserable, net, rich and miserable and naked and don't know it. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. Even as I have overcome and am sit down with my father, in his throne, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. All right, so everybody is okay with that. That's where we come up to the anointing of what you're sitting under right now. Not another age, not the age before. The anointing we're sitting under right now is that anointing that we're talking about. But he's going to restore. Buy of me, I salve. Buy of me these things. Buy of me gold. It's something we have to do. Because when we come out of the church age, we know that church age is going to go through all these. But you and I are called out of the age. But now sure it affects us. Amen, it affects us. We're all affected by the, by the Laodicean church age. But we don't have to be of the Laodicean church age. We can live in the Laodicean church age. But we were called out just like all the other bride was called out of every church age. So now let's go back to this and read Revelation. Because I want you to remember a few things. And then we'll get started. This is just a review from what we read the last time. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. Now, what was that fourth beast? Eagle. You can participate. You know what? If you'll talk back to me, you won't go to sleep. What? Fourth beast was a? Eagle. And I looked and behold a pale horse. There was a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death. So remember, he got a name. And hell followed with him, and power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with the sword, hunger, death, and with the beast of the earth. Right. All right, so that's, your, that's the anointing under the Revelation 6. And we had opened the fourth seal, verse 7 and 8. There's your fourth seal. Now, we got to remember, too, scroll it on up all the way. All the way. Right there, whoa. Remember. Keep this in your mind as we're going through the fourth seal. Here are our keys. In the fifth seal, we are not here. In the fifth seal, there is nothing to the Gentiles. It is uh, it Actually, it goes into another dimension. There's another dimension. I saw the souls under the altar. Well, the souls under the altar are not here. They're in another dimension. All right, is that all right? Say amen. amen. All right. So now here's the keys to what we need to look for because if the rapture takes place in the fourth seal, and Brother Dale was hitting on it this morning some, death has to be destroyed. A resurrection has to take place. And a rapture takes place on this seal. So guess what? There's a group of people comes to the statue of a perfect man. There's a group of people that comes to a place to where death doesn't have a dominion over them anymore. Under this fourth seal, when we see it break, for us, we see a rapture. So we must see the perfection of a bride in this fourth seal. That's why I was telling you, he must restore. Now, sure, he started restoration way back. Amen. He started a restoration way back. But remember, even when you come to the fourth church age now, not the fourth seal, the fourth church age, they went in the ground. They went in the ground. They didn't. Uh, the, the word was eaten down by this. We're going to get to it in just a minute. It went in the ground. But have you ever thought about this, though? 
let's get to these symbols and then we'll, then we'll get started because there's something I, wanna, I want you to see that's really kind of interesting. <clears throat> the symbols then is a pale horse. What is a pale horse? Red horse, white horse, black horse mixed together and it's a putrid, pale, greenish, gooey, globby. There's nothing good to look at. Amen. And we now know that his name is death. It, what, it didn't mean that his name wasn't death back then. It's just now he's been revealed. He's been made known in the apex of Satan's domain. We should know the only way death's going to be destroyed is, is when Satan comes. I'm going to read your scripture in a minute. The prince of this world has come and has nothing. Jesus said nothing in me. So if the bridegroom gets it, then the bride is supposed to get it. Amen? So pale horse, named death. Here we go again. Power was given to that person. And then a fourth part of the earth was deceived. Now we know more than that is, but it had to start somewhere. A fourth part of the earth, fourth part of the earth now is 99% of the earth. Right? But it had to start somewhere. A fourth part of the earth fell with Satan. We'll read that in a minute because remember... Under this seal, the prophet of God says, under this seal, Satan's cast out of heaven. You know where he comes? We know he was cast out way before and he came down here and he's been in doing his work. But he's got to be cast out of me and you. He's got to be cast out of this church. Amen? All right, let's read the next one. And you know what? It happens. It happens. You say, oh, it's an impossibility. If it's an impossibility, you need to start become a believer first. Once you become a believer, then you can believe what God's already said about you. Not what he's going to say. Listen, this Bible is not, this Bible's not going to be rewritten. The Bible's going to be lived. That's the problem is we got a lot of dead letter. But it's not dead to God, because I'll prove to you in just a minute. All them bugs eat, 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 but they never got to the root. Jesus said, I am the root and offspring of David. You'll never get to that. Because like I said before, what about, what about in, in November when it gets really cold? If all the trees still have... Uh, leaves and fruit on it. It's no good. The tree will die. Leaves will fall off. Amen? And the fruit will rot. So God knows what he's doing. So when we come down to the latter rain or the harvest rain, the harvest comes in October somewhere in there, you know, about coming up this time of the year, in a couple of months. But what happens is the life goes down into the root and they harvest it. This is the fourth seal. Notice, we find that this fellow here is an eagle. That's what I was just talking about. This man that, or this living creature that's poured forth here now. Or in other words, there's four different ages of it. There was an age of the lion, we find out being the fourth age. He said, come and see the fourth mystery. This is what I want you to see. The fourth mystery of the book of redemption that's been hidden in this book. Right. It's still talking about redemption. Because right. look. Let me be real frank with you. And this, when this fourth seal breaks, redemption's over. Right. They were always saying redemption was over in the seventh seal. Redemption's over on the fourth seal right. for the Gentiles. Right. Amen. Redemption is over. Because right. we can't go into rapture unless redemption's over. Right. Right. Amen. So we'll come and look the fourth mystery of the book of redemption that's been hidden in this book. Come see. John went to see and he saw a pale horse. And again, the same rider... Upon this pale horse, now he has a name called death. All right, let's go to the next. <clears throat> now, notice none of the other riders, none of the other horses, or no time that this rider ever rode, that man had no name. Because you know what? Let's just be real truthful. There was people in the Catholic Church that got born again. Amen. Martin Luther was a Catholic. He still had the ideas of the Catholic Church. God birthed them under the just shall live by faith. 
which brought them out. People were born again under Baptist faith. A Presbyterian faith. A Lutheran faith. Amen? But there was no further for them to go. But God knew that. That's okay. He put them away. Amen? Hit them. You know, put them in another dimension. Waiting on who? Waiting on us. That the full words to come. And then we come out of all that. We come out of all that. Sure, we had these different ideas. We all did. Amen? Even though you didn't have an idea of a Baptist, a Methodist, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, whatever, you still had ideas contrary to God. Amen? <clears throat> but now he's called death. It's not mentioned. He's revealed now what he is, death. Well, how we linger on that for a sermon and make it real plain, but anything that's anti, that's against the real, has to be death because there's only two subjects. Life and death. That's it. Amen? <clears throat> And that proves that the Holy Spirit revelation of this in this day is exactly the truth. Why? Because it's showing the anti. The Antichrist is riding away. The Antichrist doctrine is being made known and being what? Pushed out. And that proves that the Holy Spirit's revelation of this in this day is exactly the truth. The anti, he's death because the word, as we'll see later here, is life, see? And this man is called death. Let's go to go ahead and read the other one. Get it. Get these four done, and then we'll uh... now look the fourth seal. <clears throat> now it was not mentioned the other times of this writer, but since not now it's mentioned that he's called death. But under the revelation of the line, now watch. I want you to read this close, so I'd be sure. Wrote down the place. Stand here. In other words, he whatever he's writing said, stop and tell him the, what's going on. Not under the revelation of the Lion Age. Now look, the Lion Age was what? Now look, I want to show you something. The revelation of the Lion Age was all these faith of the fathers, God working, the little nod from God. Right? But it wasn't revealed exactly who the Antichrist was. Amen? They were still a little something. I'm telling you right there. Now, under the revelation of the Lion Age, or the First Age, the Early Age, this wasn't revealed. The next age was the Age of the Ox. Because remember, in the First Age, we didn't go through it. We're going to go through it now. I've kind of left it off until now. That it becomes a what? A saying, a deed, a doctrine, incarnate. Or we're going to look, we're going to see false prophet. We're going to see incarnate false prophet. We're going to see all that just in a minute, Okay. But you see how it started so innocent that it wasn't even called an Antichrist until what? Until John went to Patmos and saw Antichrist and come back. Paul said, grievous wolves. What is he saying? Already among you is death. Grievous wolves have come. What does does grievous wolves do? They what? They kill you. The next age was the age of the ox, which is the dark age, the middle age. It wasn't revealed as, it, as what it was. Nor the man-like beast of wisdom representing the reformers, Lutheran Wesley and so forth, it wasn't revealed. But in the eagle age, the last age, the prophetic age, where there is to rise prophetic right. utterance to whom the secrets always comes. Right. Now, folks, I, I say that's me and you. We must under we have we have we are born under a prophetic utterance. Amen. Amen. Brother Brown said, I now call you bride. He separated that church and bride. He separated it so much, he said, I now call you bride. Well, that's prophetic utterance. Amen. Nobody had ever said that. Luther never come out and said, Well, now there's a bride and there's a church. No, he was just a church. Right. Wesley was just the church. Right. The Pentecost was definitely just the church. Right. The church this and the church that. Oh, everybody called themselves bride, but they didn't know what to do. They didn't know how to handle the Word of God. But in the eagle age, the last days, the prophetic age, where there is to rise prophetic utterance. Where did you ever see anybody come together like Brother Branham did? And and aside from the discernment, because that was a different gift. Hello? Brother Branham said that. He said this was what? Bait on the hook. This is the hook. 
The bait on the hook was the signs and the wonders. That's the hook. The revelation. What? To catch the trout. So you see Brother Brown and he comes and he put, puts Statue of Perfect Man together, puts Daniel 70 weeks together, the seals come together, all these different things that Brother Brown, he, he, he's a prophet. He can turn a corner. He can build a building. None of these others could do that. You know what? They weren't required because it wasn't in their box. It wasn't in their box to see that. Then you come to the next and the next and the next. But when you come to us, it's in our box. It's a requirement for us to see these things. Amen. It's not a requirement just to live a good Christian life. Well, yeah, it's a requirement. But in this age, we were required to sit with Christ in his throne. And folks, that's incarnate God. Because it's not you and him and God sitting on a throne. Because that's Trinity. It's not you and Christ sitting on the throne. That's two lords. I was telling them downstairs, you know, we, we, we ain't got this joint air thing down yet. We ain't got this year of gods. We ain't got this come from God and went back to God. We ain't got all that down yet. But we're getting it. We're getting it. I think we're getting it. All right, let's read number five. On the fourth seal, he's still talking. Look, see the writer, the first place as an antichrist, he was death to begin with. But he's so innocent then. Well, my, he was so innocent that when he come in, let me tell you how innocent this was. When he comes in with the Father, Son, Holy Ghost baptism, everybody accepts it. Right, right. Exactly right. Now, I'm sure there was a few, I mean a minute few, that didn't accept it. But most people... 99% of the people in the religious world accepted that doctrine. Right. And you know what? God had to wink at it. He winked at it because everybody accepted it. Right. Amen? <clears throat> but now watch. See, look, that's not in our box. Amen. Yeah. It's not in our box to accept that. Amen. Right. We've been told the truth. Glory. Father, Son, Holy Ghost might have been okay in Pentecost and Luther and Wesley, but now Amen. he requires all what? All to repent. Repent of what? Repent of, the, repent of the things we thought before. That's what I have to repent of. My ideas. But he's innocent then. Then he received a crown. What? They voted a pope in. They come in with Constantine, put a pope in. A triple one. And when he did, then he united. Constantine brought church and state together. Satan united his church and state. Because he was over both of them then. Antichrist was Satan in the form of a man. Right. Now then when we find out this mystery here in his church and state, the fourth stage of his ministry, he's called the beast. Right. First he's called the Antichrist, then he's called false prophet and called the beast. Now we find him being called as the beast. Now watch, I want you to watch though what he brings the four in though. That's just three. Watch him bring the four. Now, I want you to notice that after the fourth horse, <clears throat> and in this fourth horse, if you'll notice, the first one was white, the next one was red, and the next one was black, and the fourth one. All of these other three were represented in it right. because pale is red and white and so mixed together. Because, yeah. right. you know, if you dig in deep, there's only justification, sanctification, and baptism of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. But there is a pommel worm, a locust, a caterpillar, and a... Whatever that other thing is. I got it written down here. Pummel worm, locust, caterpillar, canker worm. No wonder I can't remember canker. Canker worm. But if four eat it down, four had to raise it back up. Okay? God had to combat it with the four. And the other, what happened is, is the three, the three was mixed into the one to make the one. Wasn't something different. Same three colors mixed together to make the fourth color. All right? Now look. See, there he become four, or actually the three in one. It was all mixed up in that one thing. All right, everybody okay with that? Say amen. amen. All right, so we got four. We're looking at four stages. We're looking at four things that we're going to take now and look at and see if we can put this thing all together. So now look, going up to four stages, bringing it all the way up. Now look, all ate away at the parts of the tree, but they couldn't get to the life. Right. You can't kill God. 
You can't kill God. Amen. I tell you what they did do. You know where they you know where they tried to kill him at, don't you? What'd they kill him on? What'd they kill Christ on? Yeah. A, tree A tree that had no leaf, no bark, yeah. no fruit, and no life. Right. But the very life that created the tree. The root was hanging on that cross with me inside of him. So I don't have to hang on that old tree no more. God's already done it for us. Look at all the things he's done for us. But yeah, I was thinking, I was just thinking about that a few minutes ago. I looked down and I thought, saw all those, all those things because one's eat the fruit, one eat the leaves, one's eat the bark, and one sucks at the life. That's what he was hung on. He was hung on a denominational tree that had no life in it at all, no bark, no leaves, no fruit. But the very fruit himself, the very seed, offspring, root, everything was hanging on that tree. The very life, look, the very life of God was hanging on that tree. That's where we will find our restoration. I will restore all the years. Now, look, the four seal, look. Now, I want to notice the four of them. Now, notice off mark of four of the spiritual mathematics. God is three. This is four. He's in four here. First, Antichrist. Because remember, when he started off, he was anti against the word. All right, so he was Antichrist. Second, false prophet. What? They brought them all together and started teaching them a false doctrine from men. The spirit went in men. We, listen, there's not some spirit going to come through that wall and teach us something. They might anoint you to do something, but they're not going to walk through that door and deceive you into believing something. But when that spirit goes inside of a man and that man gets you to see it, there's your false prophet. Red, third, viker of heaven and earth and purgatory, black. Remember, that's when they crowned him. Fourth, the beast. Pale horse, Satan being kicked out of heaven. And right. we'll read it in just a minute. So we see in the fourth one that Satan gets kicked out of heaven. Now, look, let's go back just for a minute. They don't have this on the, on the screen, but I want to read something right here. Brother Brown says the palmer worm, locust, caterpillar, and canker worm. Now, don't worry about that. It's not going to be on here. I'm just going to read it here. Because you got the devil is in the palmer worm, locust, caterpillar, and canker worm, right? Yep. And just like what we were talking about, the palmer worm begins to eat at the fruit of the Spirit. Yep. So guess what? If he ate the fruit of the Spirit down and we're going to come to restoration, then the fruit of the Spirit's got to come back in the church. Amen? The locust eats the leaves. That's fellowship. All right? We got, well, then we, fellowship has to be restored. Fellowship is what? Brotherly kindness is part of fellowship. Brother Dale will get to it a little bit later. Canker worm eats the bark. The bark, Brother Brown said, is your doctrine. That doctrine was eaten down. The fruit of the Spirit was eaten down. Fellowship was eaten down. Listen, the caterpillar sucks at the life, the last stage. He sucks at the life, but he can't get to the life of this tree. Right, Amen? Because Brother Branham said the same God comes through justification, sanctification, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and living the life. Right. <clears throat> so the four stages is what? Justification, sanctification, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and then incarnate God. Right. Incarnate God must be in this age... Watch this. Let's continue reading. Bring that back up. Let's read this. See what Brother Brown said about it. I'll let, I'll let him tell you. Look at paragraph 165. Let's go on up. Because remember, he's incarnate in a beast. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Right there. 165. Now, you see he was cast out of the earth and becomes incarnate. I mean, he really meant cast out of heaven. You know that, don't you? He was cast out of heaven. All right. And became incarnate. But now also that could not be, that could be talking to me and you because he's going to have to come out of this earth. Amen. 
as the Antichrist spirit became incarnate into a man, the man changes from one thing to another. From an Antichrist spirit, which was what? People saying things in the early church age. To a false prophet, then they had to answer to one guy. Then the beast comes into him. Just exactly like the church grows. His church went from Antichrist to false prophet, and in the great age to come, the beast that is to rise up, so the church comes the same way through justification, sanctification, the baptism of the Holy Ghost, as Christ being in the people. Right. Just exactly. And he's got the anti-type of it over there, the, the, see, the type of it, rather. There he is just exactly. That's him kicked out of heaven. Everybody all right with that? Say amen. amen. So as, as Satan has eat this tree down, God has already got in place to bring it back. And then what you and I have to see in this fourth church age is that he's got to be kicked out of us. Because without that, the rapture can't take place. <clears throat> the dead saints can't come back into this dimension. Uh, and I'm like, I'm like, you know, Brother Dale, I, everybody say rapture, rapture, rapture. I'll see you in the rapture. That's okay. You got to have another standing. that the dead in Christ has to rise first. Right. So there has to be a resurrection message preached right. Amen. to get those dead saints out of the ground. Then the rapture will take place. Right. Right. Amen? There's got to be what? This whole tree has got to be restored back. Fruit of the Spirit, leaves, fellowship. The doctrine's got to be right. We can't get them people out of the ground with a false doctrine. Right. Right. Amen? Right. You ain't going to get them dead people out of the ground listening to one man. Hello? Right. I'll, I'll bet my life on it. Because that's what the Bible says. It takes a five-fold ministry to perfect the saints. Amen? <clears throat> so I depend on you then. And you got to depend on me. I don't depend on one man. I don't depend on one woman. I depend on what? Christ and a bride. Amen. That we all walk up. We all go up that statue of a perfect man. And listen, honestly, some of us need to be pulled and drug. <laughs> but the ones that don't need to be pulled and drug need to reach and get the ones that, are pull, that need to be pulled and drug and get them up here. Where we can all come and get... Listen, we're not going to leave this place till everybody comes to perfection. We're not going. So we got to preach a perfect message. We're not perfect people by no means. But we must preach a perfect message. In this fourth seal, all this has got to take place. Death has to be destroyed while we're standing on this earth. It's not going to come with a prophet coming back. It's not going to be from one man. It's going to be, Brother Branham said, rapturing faith lies in these books and tapes. He's already preached it. We just got to find it. We got to find it and we got to preach it and preach it hard. Amen? Watch what Jesus said. And there was war in heaven. Now, Brother Brown said, go back, one, go back one more time. Go back down to right the wall. Now, this is the fourth seal. This is a quote from the message, the fourth seal. He talks about Satan kicked out of heaven. So there must be something we know for a fact that when we go up, the prophet said, Satan comes down. He's up there right now accusing us of everything in the world. He's not accusing the Baptist. He's not accusing the Methodists, and I'm just using that as a... Are, are people in the message got false doctrine? He's worried about me and you. He's not worried about somebody. One word off, he's not worried about. He don't care about that. He cares about the true. He attacked the true tree. He attacked Jesus Christ. The tree. The life. The tree of life. He attacked him, so why not is he not going to attack you? But God has already raised up a standard. He's already given us a message 
to combat all this. Because in this fourth age, we get out of here. Or in this fourth seal, I'm sorry. In the seventh church age, the, listen, the seventh church age is going to keep going on. We're going to be caught up out of this age, and the age is just going to keep going on. Amen? But there's a secret catching away, and that secret is, I was telling them downstairs, <clears throat> even the apostle Paul, he didn't work with a totally open book. He didn't. A lot of things he didn't understand. But what's the paradox? What we get to understand has got to come from what he wrote. So he was writing in prophecy. He was prophesying of a people to come that will take this and understand it and know what it means. Paul says, I look through a glass darkly. Listen, we can't get the dead saints here looking through a, gar a glass darkly. Because what what Paul say then, though? Then we meet him face to face. Now, when we meet Christ face to face on this side, you know we don't meet him physically. But remember, he's, he's going to be here so much. Forget what I just said. Forget what I just said. He's here now. He's here now. He's not coming. He's here now. We just got to believe he's here now. Because you know what? We're looking for him. Why don't we just start looking at him? That all right? Sometimes, you know, you, you get checked a little bit, you know. He's not, he's not, and we got to quit saying that. Well, well, when he comes, well, when he comes. He's here. Amen. So we've got to come to a, a part this is our box. Y'all don't believe this or not, but I'm about finished. For right now, I don't want to go any further. I'll get something else next Sunday. But we come to this box. But in this box, when this box ends and you come into the fifth seal, we're gone. So everything's got to happen right here for us. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of our restoration. And I believe he is restoring. Look at the things we've all come through. All of us. Even our understanding of when we weren't in church and now we're in church or when we had another church and we, I don't mean come here, I mean come under a revelation that what God has already given us. Now watch what Christ told us. He said in John 12, 31, they don't have it here. John 12, 31, Christ said, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. John 12, 32. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 14, 30. Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and has nothing in me. Now let's pull back up. Pull that back up. Let me read the last scripture then. And there was war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Now, who's Michael? Christ. Amen. Christ in who? The hope of glory? Right. You. See, that's the problem. We got Michael fighting Satan over there in heaven somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. I like this, and prevail not. Right. Neither was their place found anymore right. in heaven. Right. And the great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil yeah. and Satan, yeah. which deceiveth the whole world. Yeah. He was cast out into the, into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Right. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, it wasn't just a whisper. It was a thunder. Right. It was a voice that said, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their life unto death. 
Therefore rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea, for the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth he hath but a short time. <clears throat> Under the fourth seal, Satan is cast out. First, he's got to be cast out of us. Then he's cast out of heaven. Then what does he do? He comes down and incarnates a pope okay. or a person. He comes down and incarnates a person. As he does that, we're going up. Right. So God then must have to incarnate his bride right. first. Because right. remember, to all these seals, does Satan ever do anything original? No way. Right. He is not... He don't, he don't even have a seed to reproduce himself with. Right. Amen? So that means every word he's got is false right. and brings nothing but death. But now here you and I have come, and we must have to say this right here, the same thing. Herefore, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and has nothing. Now he's going to Calvary. Yeah. Looks like it looked like Satan won. But the prince of this world cometh and hath nothing in me. Jesus said in Revelation 22, 16, I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. Right. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright and morning star. Glory. Amen. You love the Lord? Amen. They overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their lives unto death. Right. So we see in the fourth seal we got what? We've got fruit, leaves, bark, life. That's what's got to be restored. So you, what's, what's restoring the, all this fellowship is being restored. What did I tell you before? <clears throat> the seals are not for, remember, the seals are not exactly for your new birth, to get you born again. No. No, Christ died on the cross. He said, "Believe if you believe me, I'll come and be with you, even in you. Right. Amen? Amen? Didn't say nothing about a seal. Right. But to bring back full fellowship, to bring back what? The restoration of what Adam had. Right. Amen? Because Amen. before Adam fell, he had full authority. Yes. And he could talk to God every day, Amen. anytime he wanted to. Right. He could walk right up to him and talk to him, and there was no fear. There was no death. There was no sorrow. There was nothing that could take him away from God. Well, now, if, if we're going to be restored back to that, then we got to come back to that same condition. You and I have come back to the place now where here we are. What are we going to do about it? What are we going to do about it? That's our box. And one day, you know what's going to happen? That box is going to disappear. And you know what? If you're in the box, you go with it. If you're not in the box, you don't go with it. You got to stay here and what? Continue in that church age and take all the wrath that comes with that church age because you didn't accept it. So these seals, now we come up and they're not for, like I said, they're not for so much as for to get you born again. It's more to get us more in fellowship with God because what we lost was what? Brother Bram goes to it. Read Restoration of the Bride Tree. Fruit of the Spirit. The leaves was what? Every time, every time a, a, a breeze comes by, watch the leaves. What? Worshiping God. Well, the old locust, he started eating that away. So all they did was, you know, set like most of y'all do in this church service. Most of y'all. Most of y'all in the church service, you know. If you moved, if you moved, you'd probably hurt. And then the bark. You know what the problem with the bark is? He's given us two lords, seven thunders, return ministry, and all this other junk that, that people are preaching. He's took the doctrine of the church right out and put in false teaching. But I will restore he promised, and he's going to do it, because you know what? That's what he gave us. Right. And this is, you know what? We can't even be born again under Luther's box. That's right. God moved on. God moved on. 
We can't be, we can't go back here. Sure, we live under the joy and the and the things of these other ages, but that's our age. Our age is what? Destroy the devil. Now listen, he's not annihilated, but he's got to be destroyed in me and you. The prince of this world, let's stand. The prince of this world has come. He's going to come, but he has nothing in me. You know what nothing, you know what Jesus was saying? There's no false idea. There's no false doctrine. There's no false. I was reading what Brother Brown said that Jesus Christ was the pure truth. Everything he was was the pure truth. He didn't just have the word. He was the living word. And then if you and I, get, here we go again, become joint heirs, then we don't just have the word. We're the living word. Amen. Musicians come. We are the living word of God made manifest. That's our, that what? That's our inheritance. Our inheritance is not just, I will die, hallelujah, by and by. No, I'll not die. I'll be raptured by and by. I'll fly away. Let's, I love, Brother Joe's doing a good job. Give credit where credit's due. If I had a rose, I'd hand him one. Lord, he reminds me a lot of his daddy, don't you? Yeah. His daddy was our song leader for a long time back in the 70s when Joe wasn't even, he was still in God. <laughs> I've seen that little and Esther was, that Esther was old too. She was old. She was like me, but she was here. But we were little. But hey, listen, this is, a, this is our commission. Amen. Keep, keep on, keep on. Don't worry about this and that coming here and there. The prince of this world cometh. Now, Jesus was going to Calvary. Satan was right there. Brother Brown said, stinging him. That old stinger of death. He was sitting there. But what did Christ say? He has nothing. Right. Nothing in me. Right. He died once. He died once for all. Right. Let's sing a song. We don't have to die, folks. We don't have to die. Prisoners with bleeding stripes. Oh, Paul and Silas pray that night. And in their chains, they begin to sing. Their chains were Your name, I bless your name. We're never gonna forget that name, Jesus Christ. I give you. We're attached to it in our life, even if we have to die. But we are attached to that name. You are that name. The truth, the way. I bless your name. Let's close our eyes. Some midnight hour. Satan is going to come. If you should find you're in a prison in your mind. But Satan just beating at you, beating at you, beating at you. Reach out. Reach out. And praise. Oh, 
bless your name. We bless your name. Start, what we're doing is, our problem is, is we're not really listening to what the Bible's already given us. We can sit and listen to the preaching, and that's fine. We do, and I believe we're, as a church, we're growing. Not just by numbers, but we're growing in spirit. I'd rather see you grow in spirit than grow in numbers. Amen? But growing in spirit, you're going to have problems. But you know what? I believe we've got something in place to handle all those. The prince of this world will come. That's right. Remember what Brother Brown said one time? He said, I want to be so hidden God till Satan doesn't know what to do with me. See, I, I mean, really? Can you believe that? You get to a place to where, but you know what? It's going to have to be because Satan is death. Satan is fear. Satan is death. Those two things have to be destroyed here by the Word of God in a group of people doing the simple things. Like Brother said, you know, go to church, read your Bible. The simple things we do. But that standard has already been put there. Because we had a prophet come in the end time and he said, hey, this is what we got to do. You're an astronaut now. You've been pressurized for the job, not in training. I believe our training's about over. I believe we've come to a place where the astronaut, where we can walk in there and we can mash the button, fire that big engine up and take off. The math's already been done. Amen? The mysteries have all become history. What are we doing now? We're just what? Honing. We're getting, we're getting, we're getting our believing into a channel. And I believe if we'll hit that, sure we hit it every once in a while. We see miracles. We see things happen. But man, I'm telling you, Brother Brown said, watch. When all that lightning and all that fire and all that stuff comes together, God will anoint a church then. Well, you know what he's going to do? He's not going to anoint something dead. He's going to anoint what's already there. Amen? Amen? Because this is what's there for us. Right. Our prophet told us there will be a resurrection right. in this end time. Glory. Rapturing faith lies in the books and the tapes. Right. I just believe that. I'm just dumb enough to believe what he said. I don't want to believe what nobody else said. I want to believe what he said. Amen. Let's sing one more song before we go. Oh. If you need a touch, just lift your hand. He touched me.
You get a touch from God today? Amen. Amen. I mean, did you get a real touch? I mean, Amen. take this with you. You know, we, we're in the final, we're in the final stretch. Listen, when you run a relay race, how many people are in the relay race? Four. The last guy needs to be what? The fastest. Because if you're behind, you want that dude to catch up. So I think we've handed the baton to the fourth person. Brother Brown passed off the scene and he handed that baton to a fast group of people. This fast coming to the head to where what? To where Christ can live and I die. We need that more than anything. Sure, we got life to live. Sure, we got jobs. We got stuff to do. And you know what? Stuff gets in the way. But you know what? He's got some people that has a little time. How about praying for us that don't have a lot of time? Amen. Next Sunday, before we go, next Sunday we're going to have a special visitor. And uh, he has uh, found us online a couple years ago. From I went to Minnesota and preached for him in, in January, if you'll remember that. Uh, his name's Russ Dunker, and he's going to be here with us. Uh, he watches in every Sunday, but he's going to be here with us next Saturday and Sunday. He's going to be in church service with us. So um, I know you'll treat him well because you always treat our visitors well, but he's really not a visitor. He's just behind the camera. You can't see him. But he uh, considers himself part of our congregation. He doesn't have anybody real close to, to fellowship with. So, um, And, man, you're talking about somebody's got a testimony. Whew, he's got a testimony. But uh, he's a real super nice guy. But uh, just pray for him. Pray for his journey. And then we'll see you all Wednesday night, Lord willing. Pray for the ones that are, that are out and, and, and Brother Anderson in Las Vegas. Lord mercy. He needs prayer. <laughs> but you know what? Jesus walked, Jesus walked with prostitutes and sinners and it didn't bother him one bit. Amen? Didn't bother him one bit. Why? Because the prince of this world come and didn't have nothing in him. And you know what? You say that. You say that. You say that when Satan comes to you or something goes wrong. Say, hey, I'm a born again child of God. Satan, you can't touch my soul. Oh, you can, you can beat me up in my brain or you can beat me up in my body if you want. You're not going to touch the soul. You know what I tell devil? Devil, I'm going to live a lot longer than you are. <laughs> I'm going to live a whole lot longer than you are. Because the Bible said, we said he'll be here for what? For a short season. Now, you and I are not going to be here for a short season. We're here for a long eternity, brother. John, I promise you, we're going to be here. We're an eternal people trapped in time. If you're born again today, you absolutely are an eternal creature trapped in time. But one day that's going to come together and we're going to get out of here. You love the Lord? Let's bow our heads. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we pray, Lord, that what we've said is been pleasing to you, Lord, and maybe help the people, Lord, realize that we come to this opening of this fourth seal and it's so important to us because we leave this dimension. We actually have this vile body that we're walking in changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. But before that, Lord, one day, and I long to see that day that we'll be preaching your word and Robert Tatum walks through the door. Yes. Sister Colleen walks through the door. And all the ones that went on, Brother Gary, Brother Richard, Donnie's mom and dad, all the ones that we're thinking about now, Lord, we're sad. But Lord Jesus, they're more real than we are. <laughs> they are more real. They're going to bring something into this dimension that's only been done by one man, and that's you. They're going to bring an eternal body into this hellhole called earth. But Lord, you told us that it wouldn't be very long, though we which are alive and remain shall not prevent or hinder those which are asleep. For the trumpet will sound. The dead in Christ shall rise first and we'll be changed right here in Satan's Eden. Right here under his nose, we'll be changed and we'll be called away and then let the wrath come 
on the unbelievers. Father, we pray, Lord, as we made that statement, we now think of family, friends, children, loved ones that are not saved. Lord, you're still a sin-killing God. You're still a soul-saving God. You're still a God that can take somebody that don't even want you and change their whole being into a child of God. Prostitute. Doesn't matter. Those are just names. It's just all unbelief. And Lord, through these seals, we see that that unbelief is being cast out and has went in another direction. Repent means to turn and go in another direction. Lord, we thank you for these people here, Father, that's been with us for a long time. And truly, the ones that's went on, Lord, we miss them like crazy. But Lord, what a wonderful time they're having, rejoicing, knowing that they're coming back here to see us face to face. And then, Lord, we'll get to see you when we go to that marriage supper. And then we'll come back and spend a thousand years on this earth just fellowshipping with one another. And that's not even the eternal part. Lord, you got a future home that's going to come down and we're going to live in that city for an eternity. Nothing to hinder, no sorrow, no pain. Lord, this is just but a short season. The Bible says this is just a vapor, life is. But Lord, while we're living in this life, give us all comfort. Heal the ones that need healing in their body. Save the ones that need saving, Father. And all of us need more of you, Lord. All of us need more of understanding of who you are and what you're doing. Lord, grant that this week, Father. Just be with us now. As we go, be with us on the highways. Be with us until we come back on Wednesday night ready to hear from you, Father. We ask you to grant these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You're dismissed. Oh, I was shackled by heavy burden.
touched me and made me whole.